Hi YouTube, it's Kathy and this is my weekly entertainment wrap-up for October 30th through November 5th. This week I read one book, I watched five shows, I watched two movies, and I listened to one book. Just before I get into it, this was a hell of a week for me and I just want to talk a little bit about it and then I'm going to talk about more about it at the end because I know not everybody wants to know about my life all that much. This is a hell of a week for me because I did my October wrap up which was a mess. If you haven't seen it yet, I highly suggest going and watching it and just making fun of it with me because there were so many things that happened that are just random and wrong. Chronologically second for the week is I got a phone call and my phone told me it was my partner Chad and I picked it up and said hello love like I usually do and then it was somebody else on the line telling me that he had been in an accident. He is completely fine and I still don't understand how that's possible given the state of the vehicle he was in that got hit. Um, I'm going to show you photos of that at the end, but just rest assured I've been a little bit on edge since that happened and I still sometimes uh, get these like really big emotions about it. So he's completely fine, but if you want to see some ridiculous car photos, wait until the end of the video. The third big thing of note for this week is I announced the 10th round of the Queer Lit Readathon. It's happening December 4th through 10th. And my co-hosts and myself announced the round and what all the prompts are going to be and all of those types of things. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it down below. I'm really excited for this round and I'm really excited that we have Audrey back as our special guest host. Not only because I already love Audrey and Audrey is just such a wonderful person to work with and a friend, but because Audrey also did all of the graphics for all of the recommendations for Instagram and Twitter, and they look so good. I'm not very graphically minded, so I kept them very simplistic up until now for the Instagram for Queer Lit Readathon, but these look so good and I'm so excited to share them with you. I also forgot to mention that I issued a challenge to see if you guys can get me up to 3,000 subscribers before I hit 1,000 videos, so please share everything far and wide. It would make me very happy. The one book I managed to read this week was also the book I was reading when I got that aforementioned phone call about Chad, and that's Heartbreak Homes. This is a young adult mystery thriller with a little bit of horror elements to it because it is a little bit of a horrifying situation, I suppose. And although this one takes place in Oregon, it is by a Canadian author. In this one we have three point of view characters. First we have Frankie. She's a senior in high school and she's going to this party with her best friend. Her best friend has some new friends that are really popular and that type of thing. She's not really popular. She's in the closet her best friend knows. Her grandparents don't know. She lives with her grandparents because her parents previously died in a car crash. So she's obviously had a little bit of a different upbringing. Our second point of view character is Martin. He used to go to the same high school as Frankie. However, his dad kind of took all of their money, including his college money, and put it into this big investment that ended up flopping. It was this big real estate investment actually where this party is set because they finished one of the big homes they were going to be putting in this area. And then the company just went belly up and all of that money invested is gone now. Essentially, this party is taking place here because the son of the guy who started this whole company and then it went belly up and he's moved on to other things. His son knows how to get into the house and that's why there's a big party of like 200 kids here in the middle of absolute nowhere. Our third point of view character is Kara. She and her friends are homeless. They've been living on the streets and they've decided that going to this party is a really good time to steal some things that they might not otherwise have access to. However, this night does not exactly go as planned, and after this, these characters have to figure out what happened, who did it, and if they're going to do it again. I enjoyed this one. This one kept me guessing. It kept me trying to figure out what was going to happen between these different characters. It kept me thinking what these other side characters were doing, because some of them were acting a little bit sketchy. And overall, I had a really good time with this one. I should also mention that this is a new release, and I actually got my copy on in either an Instagram or a Twitter giveaway. I can't remember which, but the author sent it directly to me. And she also co-owns a bookstore in Nova Scotia, which is so awesome. And if I ever go back to Nova Scotia, I know I'm going to have to stop in. 
on to what I watched this week. When I left off in our house journey, we were about a little less than halfway through the second season. Now we're a few episodes into the third season. One thing of note that I definitely didn't realize the first time I watched through, because the first time I watched through, and by watched through I mean watched it on TV because I've never watched it all the way through, uh, there's a character that definitely has a bone to pick with House and comes up against him in a certain situation. No spoilers, even though this show is uh, getting up there in age. And uh, it doesn't actually say it at any point, I don't think, in the actual script. However, that character's last name is definitely Moriarty because we paused it for whatever reason. Our TV will actually show us the actors and their names that are on screen when we pause. And I went, oh, uh-huh, I see what you did there. I'm still very much enjoying this and honestly I would sit down every night and continue watching this, which is why I haven't really read all that much recently, but again I was trying not to read 200 books this year, so I'm succeeding in that. We also watched a single episode of The Cabinet of Curiosities because my roommate started watching it and then we just decided to watch one episode with her. And this is the third episode. It has to do with this guy going to a very small town and doing autopsies because that's what he does. And then there, because there was this big accident at the mine and then some creepy and weird things happened. I won't ruin it for you. I guess all of these are based on short stories and they've been made into one hour TV episodes or Netflix episodes, I guess, because they're not actually made for television television they're made for streaming. And at some point I'm going to have to check out the other episodes because I enjoyed this one. We also watched the first four episodes of the third season of Dairy Girls because we finally remembered that that season finally came out and it's just so much fun to revisit these characters. I had kind of forgotten all of the things previously as you do when you watch an entire show and then you have to wait an extended period of time but as soon as we got into the first episode I remembered all their names, I remembered their weird personality things, and I just had so much fun with this. Also also, we kind of forgot which decade this was set. We couldn't remember if it was like the 70s, 80s, or 90s. I thought it was 80s, and then it got to this talent show aspect, and I thought to myself, I really hope that they're doing this, but that doesn't fit if this is the 80s, and then they were doing that, and I was very excited by that. So if you've seen it, you know. If you haven't seen it, I'm very cryptic because I don't want to spoil it for you, but it's a lot of fun. I also caught up on last week and this week's episode of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, so I watched the Snatch Game and I watched the Makeover episode, and both of these were lovely. I always have a good time with these. As Bussy Queen pointed out, this was a very evenly matched Snatch Game in terms of how much exposure people got. They didn't really put a lot of answers for people who were actually doing really well or not doing well. They kind of, everybody had three or four answers you got to see, which isn't very typical of the editing of Snatch Game. I also really enjoyed the makeover episode because in this episode they were making over the Queen team, which are the people that work behind the scenes on the show to make sure that everybody's corsets are done up, make sure everybody's fed, all of those good things and that was adorable because I love seeing women being put into high drag. It's just really fun for me. I want somebody to put me into drag. In fact I have at least one queen that if I ever actually get to meet her in person she's already said that she will put me in drag and I'm so excited for that. I also finished the last couple of episodes of Easy Bake Battle which is just wholesome and just something I needed to watch and just relax because Relaxation is a thing that was definitely needed this week. This is wholesome and wonderful, but at the same time, I don't understand how people do this so quickly. My roommate is a wonderful cook, but it takes her hours to do what she's doing. Granted, sometimes she's doing things that literally take hours, like smoking things on the barbecue and all of that type of stuff, but we know if Megan's making dinner, it's gonna be like at least an hour until we see her, and that's when she's halfway through making it. She also made us dinner last night, and it was amazing, so don't think that I'm knocking her skills or her time management or anything. I'm very excited by the fact that she is such a good cook. The first movie we watched this week is Wendell and Wild. I knew nothing going into this besides Key and Peel had something to do with it. In fact, I think I just knew that Jordan Peel had something to do with it, and I was like, whatever it is, it's an animated thing he's tangentially related to, sure. And then it turns out that Key and Peel are actually the titular characters in this. I say titular characters because I wouldn't call them the main characters. This one is an animated film, and those two characters are demons that live on another demon 
uh, under the earth, if you will. And they've always wanted to break out of this situation and make their own amusement park. To do that, they figured out that they need to go to earth and they can get earthlings to help them figure out how to do that and manipulate them into making that a reality. On earth, we have this character, I believe her name was Kat, although all the girls at this new school are trying to call her KK, which no. And she's had a little bit of a hard upbringing for the past five years or so because her parents unfortunately passed away again in another thing that I'm trying not to think about too hard. And while she's at this new school that's meant to be for second chances, she finds out something about herself and that she might have some certain powers and she might be wanting to use those for certain things. This was really good. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed how inclusive this was. It had a wide range of representation when it comes to BIPOC folks, but then there's also a trans character and I did not expect to see that and I was so excited by it. There was one point where one of the characters did dead name that character, I think to mostly make sure that everybody knew it was a trans character and I could have done without that but it was also done by like a child who completely forgot that they should be using a different name so I can see it but I could have also lived without it personally. This was a fun wild spooky ride and I really really enjoyed this one. If you haven't seen it yet I highly recommend it. Now if you think about the dates of last week, specifically the date of yesterday, you can probably guess what other movie I watched this week. Remember, remember November, the 5th of November. We watch it every year. We watched it last year. We probably watched it the year before. Before that I wasn't living in this house so I can't tell you but uh, it was funny because Chad was like didn't you guys just watch this like a few months ago and it's like no we watched it literally a year ago and he was like oh Oh, time is weird. V for Vendetta was a comic book. It was turned into this movie 16 years ago, so this movie could drive, theoretically, if it were a teenager. And instead of telling you about the plot again, something I've always wanted to do is try to do V's V speech, and I haven't memorized it. If I was thinking ahead of time, I might have tried to memorize it, but this was just not the week for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to cold read it for you, and then I'm going to move on, because this character is so theatrical, and it just makes me miss theater and being in theater so I'm just going to try and most likely fail hard to just do the infamous V speech. Voila! In view of humble vaudevillian veteran cast vicariously in both as victim and villain by the vicissitudes of fate. See we only just got to the end of the first sentence and we already got to a word I don't know and I don't know if I pronounced it correctly. This visage, no mere veneer of vanity, is a vestige of vox- it's not even a V word that I can't figure out- populi? Populi? Vivage of the vox populi, now vacant, vanished. However, this valorous visitage of a bygone vexation stands vivified and has vowed to vanquish these venal and virulent vermin, vanguarding vice and vouchsafing the violently vicious and ferocious violation of volition. The only verdict is vengeance, a vendetta, held as a votive not in vain, for the value and veracity of such shall one day vindicate the vigilant and the virtuous. Verily, this V word I can't pronounce, a verbiage fears the most verbose, so you let me simply add that it is my very good honor to meet you, and you may call me V. It's so much fun to attempt, and uh, maybe one day I'll attempt it for real. Maybe next year I'll try to actually memorize it and get a cape and a Guy Fox mask. Probably not but maybe. Moving right along, the one audiobook I finished this week is An Unexpected Death. This is a true crime book about a man who then became a body who was found at the Belvedere Hotel. There are people on both sides of this camp. Some people think that he took his own life, some people think that he was horribly murdered, and unfortunately we still don't really know, and I don't know if we ever will. Something interesting of note is that the author of this book actually lives at the Belvedere, or at least they did at the time when this happened. So she was there when the missing posters went up for this person, and she was there when they actually found the body in the Belvedere Hotel. Now what's interesting about this one is either this person jumped or was pushed off the top of the hotel, or the parking structure next door, I can't actually remember, and went through a low lower roof and into a room that actually used to have a swimming pool in it. So there was just this hole in the roof that people didn't really realize was there until people he used to work with were actually still searching for him and went up to the roof of this hotel, saw this hole, and then got people to investigate to see if somebody had gone through that hole, perhaps. Now I'm not going to rehash all the details because honestly that could take up to an hour. I've seen many different videos about this case before, which is why I ended up listening to this audio book, but there are some details that don't match up and I can understand the people on both sides 
sides of the he took his own life or he was murdered camps and I do not know which side to pick so I simply won't. If you are into true crime and you don't mind cases that are completely unsolved, this is one to pick up. Speaking of true crime, I guess, now is the time where I am going to let you see some of the horrific photos that have been haunting my dreams to do with Lemon Tart, the vehicle that you might remember we only got less than five months ago because in June somebody hit Chad's parked car so badly that it was a write-off. So we had to get rid of poor Nacho, we got Lemon Tart, and uh, yeah, there's no way she's coming back from that in my opinion, but yes, here are some of the photos. Um, Chad actually rolled quite a few times and his vehicle ended up leaning against a tree. The other vehicle ended up in a creek upside down. Fortunately, neither of them were seriously hurt. Chad went to the hospital to make sure he got checked out. The other person refused medical treatment, so there's that. How it happened is the other person lost control of their vehicle, hit Chad, and he went flying down the embankment. He actually had to crawl out the driver's side window because there's no way he could open that door and uh, then just flagged people on the street to come and help them because where they were situated people wouldn't readily just see their vehicles. Um, so yeah, again, he's fine. He's probably taking this way better than I am, which is ridiculous. And miraculously, all the computer gear that he had in the car for his work is also fine. So everything is fine. I don't want to freak you out, but in case you wanted to see these ridiculous photos, here they are. That's it for this week. If you've read, watched, or listened to any of these, let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down in the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment, but I want to make sure that I know you were here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you happen to be on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link, as always, is down below. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!